Thanks. It is about 9.30 uh, p.m. here on the East Coast. This occurred around 6.15 uh, p.m. in Butler, Pennsylvania. Um, if you're just joining us, I'm going to be playing um, the what the former president, uh, how this began, the former president making remarks shortly into uh, the beginning of this, uh, this campaign appearance. Let's watch. You know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. CNN primetime anchors Caitlin Collins and Abby Phillip are, are here with me. Um, Caitlin, I know you've been talking to, to sources. What's the latest you're, you're hearing? Um, the entire campaign apparatus is just deeply rattled. A lot of people have not been able to have a chance to speak with the former president directly. A few of them have. Obviously, we heard from him himself, but even his children just had a few brief moments on the phone with them. We've heard from, from most of them. So far, all obviously still processing this. I mean, obviously, every president is hyper aware of their security and their surroundings ever since what happened to, to, to President Reagan and also JFK. Donald Trump himself is also one of those. I mean, I've been to dozens of these rallies. This is outside, obviously, so the security parameter is different. But you go through Secret Service security to go into any rally like this. You go through a magnetometer. You have that instance. I should note what I'm hearing from a lot of them is questions about the security here and what happened and how something like this could happen, because it does seem unthinkable, uh, I think. And the House Oversight Chair, James Comer, just put out a statement saying that he has reached out to the Secret Service Director. He's requesting briefings. We are going to see action on Capitol Hill as a result of this, even though we are very much still learning so much of this. Uh, but I also spoke with people who were there. I, I'm not going to say the name of one of the people I was on the phone with just because they had to get off very quickly, so I don't uh, want to disclose their identity. But they were right up there near the front uh, when this happened. And they said you could see Trump react as, as obviously, as he says now, it was a bullet that grazed his ear. And you can hear the panic in his voice in those first few moments in the audio where he's saying, let me get my shoes, let me get my shoes. Mm. And then he's whisked off stage. He pumped his fist, as you can see here in this photo right now. I was told that as he was taken down into the motorcade before he was taken to the hospital there in Butler, Pennsylvania, he, he kind of pumped his fist again and had this defiant kind of stance, you know, reacting in the moment to, to what happened. He has left the hospital, but a lot of people obviously are, are still just trying to get in touch with him and to, to talk to him in the aftermath of this. Yeah, I mean, it is inconceivable that something like this could have happened. I mean, I've covered President Obama, President Trump, uh, candidates. Even at outdoor rallies, in fact, especially at outdoor rallies, the kind of security that they would have, the perimeter, not just where people are going, but all the buildings surrounding it, um, there's a reason that th that whole apparatus is supposed to extend even beyond just the, the rally itself. And it's because of this country's long 
dark history with exactly this scenario. Right. I mean, uh, they have uh, counter snipers who are with binoculars scanning, scanning build, all buildings over. all so over. Usually, uh, on top of those very buildings. And so, I mean, th this is not, unfortunately, as, as Tim said, not a new scenario for this country. In fact, it is a scenario that's played out too many times in this country, and the Secret Service is deeply aware of that. Uh, every single time that a protectee is, uh, comes even close to an incident like this, it's something that sets off uh, an incredible amount of soul searching within the organization, and I'm sure this one will too. But for the country tonight, I, you know, I think so many people on it doesn't matter where you are in the political spectrum. I'm hearing from them, obviously, tonight. People are stunned and they're worried. They are worried about what is going to happen in this country. We still have some four months before the end of this election, and this is occurring before a major political event. Uh, there is a lot of fear in the country right now about what this portends and also what it says what about think? where we are. And you think, I mean, it's, you know, there's Ronald Reagan, but Steve Scalise, uh, Nancy Pelosi, yeah. the man who Gabby came Giffords, to her, her who, house, uh, who pulled out a statement tonight her husband, as well. Gabby Giffords as well. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we've seen these incidents before, but there's something, Anderson, particular about it happening in the context of a presidential campaign. It's a sign, as President Biden said tonight, of a sickness in the country that someone thought to take a step to alter or affect the outcome of a presidential election with an act like this. And uh, for people who are watching tonight, who are wondering, what this means, I mean, they are right to wonder because I think we all have to be prepared uh, for a, a lot of chaos ahead. But I also think it's a moment for the country to decide right now uh, what kind of country we live in and whether or not this is the kind of thing that is going to really change uh, how we conduct ourselves. I mean, I think it is in, we're still within the power of patriotic citizens in this country to push back against this kind of darkness. Well, and just on the security aspect of this, there were counter snipers there. You can see them in, a, in videos because there is a building behind. Obviously, this is he, he's in Butler County. This is deep Trump country. But there, there's a building that you can see that was kind of behind where Trump is out on the stage. You can see it in the photos that, that people who were there took and the videos that they took. You see the counter snipers uh, on there. You can see them anytime Trump is somewhere, you, you often see them. Uh, I think also the question, and what we're hearing tonight, you mentioned the Republican convention that is starting in Milwaukee on Monday, where Trump and many of his surrogates were slated to travel to as soon as tomorrow. Uh, we are told it is still expected to go forward. We'll see if that changes as the, as the night progresses and as this investigation is getting underway. But security was already an issue there, the footprint. The, the RNC wanted it to be wider than what it was. I do think this is only going to make it and the Democratic convention in Chicago in a month from now, only even more intense as they're learning more about this. I do